By that, I mean his leadership is contagious. He believes. A lot of exclamation points. He gets his teammates to believe. And he gets the Browns fans to believe they can win. Baker Mayfield is contagious. Acho, is Baker Mayfield the leader the Browns need and contagious? Ah, he definitely is, Marcellus. I've started to realize that we may have got this one all wrong about Baker Mayfield. We, Think about this, Sel. Mm. It's easy to be cocky when you win it. Mm. It's easy to be confident when everything's going right. But what about when things are going wrong? Baker Mayfield, year one, things weren't going great for him. Year two, things were going bad for him. But Baker still was like, no, I know who I am. I know what I'm capable of doing for this team. And now look at him in year three, the Browns sitting at nine and three. Marcellus, I think Baker is not only the leader that the Browns wanted, but he's also the leader that they needed. The Browns, they saw the fate of Manziel. Baker saw the fate of Colt McCoy. He saw the fate of Brandon Whedon. He saw the fate of Robert Griffin in Cleveland. And he said, you know what? I don't care about all of that. I don't care about how it's worked out for them in the past. I'm going to maintain my confidence and composure. I do think Baker Mayfield is the exact leader that the Browns need, and we're now seeing it all play out firsthand in front of us. You know the quote, fake it till you make it. Well, Baker Mayfield, he was faking it at first, but you will never make it if you don't ever fake it at times. He was faking it at first. Now Baker and the Browns have made it. I do, in fact, think that he's a leader that they need. I've had to change my opinion because Baker has finally consistently changed his play. Oh, wow. Um, I'm going to sit here and just say a simple no. Uh, and it's that simple for me. It's amazing that people like you, Acho, are changing your opinion of Baker Mayfield because you saw one half of fantastic football. Hip, hip, hooray. I give you that. That's great. You're a franchise quarterback one now half. because you had a great half. Really? That's, that's your standard. Oh, no. Acho's standard is also, look how many bad quarterbacks have been in Cleveland. Finally, we have an adequate one. So let's anoint him. No, that's not my standard. When I say franchise quarterback, when I say leader, oh, man, it comes at a certain threshold, and it comes with responsibility. Baker Mayfield is too inconsistent in terms of his production and him emotionally for him to be the leader of this team. Think about it. Let's talk about him emotionally first. The same Baker Mayfield who went into this offseason said, mum's the word. I'm going to go out there and let my play speak for me. No more talking. Mm -hmm. And then Baker Mayfield, right before the season start, couldn't help himself. He's the same guy that went out there and said, oh, I'm going to take some shots at the media and say that they just get paid to talk. I thought, Baker, you were going to just play and let that speak for you. But he couldn't hold himself. So you talk about how he's cocky when he's bad. I don't give a damn who you are when you're bad. When you're bad, it's bad. No matter if you're a nice person, a likable person, or as Baker Mayfield is, sometimes a troll. I don't care about your personality. I care about your production. Let's talk about that production. How Baker Mayfield is really two dudes trapped in one uniform. How the fact that you could look at Baker Mayfield and you could think he's up and down. Look at Baker Mayfield. So this season, in terms of wins and losses, is that the same quarterback? I understand losses mean you're probably playing a good team. I understand losses mean you probably didn't play your best. But, whoa, as a franchise quarterback, need a little more consistency. As a leader, need a little more consistency and stability emotionally. I don't see that in terms of Baker Mayfield and his psyche between the ears, and I certainly don't see that in his production on the field consistently. Not a leader for me or my team. We got to bring in Fox NFL analyst Greg Jennings. So, Greg, you agree with the Hall of Famer Joe Namath that Baker is the leader the Browns need? He is the leader that the Browns needed. Uh, when you look at them as a team, where they are right now tells you that his leadership style, it works. Those guys, it's not all about what we think it should look like, Marcellus. It's not all about what we've always been accustomed to and been exposed to at that position. He goes about his ability and his game and his style a different way. And he's, it's an off-beaten path. It's a rebel-like mentality, if you will. But that's okay because those guys in that locker room and talking with Jarvis Landry, they believe in Baker. And that's all that matters. We all know this, that it don't matter about no one outside of that locker room. What we get done is how we get it done. And if we believe in one another... That's all that matters, period. 
my stats may not be what they what I would like him to be. He's in year two. Like Baker, we act as if Baker Mayfield has been in this league for five, six years, and his numbers and his statistic his statistics should be sky high just because he's the quarterback and he was number one overall. Yes, there are high expectations, but one of those expectations was can he turn this organization around at the quarterback position? Well, they're headed in that direction, so I would have to mm, say... Talk about yes, it, G. They need this leadership style. Man, stop. Baker Mayfield is in year what three, so y'all better stop what with all take. that. First of all, y'all should have known take. not to take this take as far as y'all have. This all started because Joe Namath, respect to Joe Namath, Joe Namath is on Twitter and talking about Baker Mayfield. And y'all gonna run with this narrative because you got Joe Namath saying it, and we saw one half of great Baker Mayfield football. That's enough for you guys. I'm not so easily duped in situations like this. He had one great half, and he had another great half against Cincy. Uh, they're on a four-game winning streak. They were on a four-game winning streak before. Y'all remember how that winning streak ended? Oh, they had to play Pittsburgh. It ended with like a minute into that game. Baker Mayfield throwing his pick six, and the game was a wrap. Over. Beat Pittsburgh yet? No. Nah. Beat Baltimore yet? No. Nah. Um, got wiped by Baltimore, as a matter of fact. But now he's your leader. And Greg Jennings wants to sit here and say, oh, because where they are right now, Baker Mayfield has to be the leader because it works. Look where they are. Hey, I ride around with my family all the time. Second row, third row. I'm the one driving. So when we get there, I'm not going to sit there and look at my five-year-old son and say, hey, you didn't get us here, but take us all the way. Take us home. You don't look at somebody who didn't be the sole reason or primary reason why you're in this good place. I'm, I'm, as, I'm confused too, G. As a person, as a person <laughs> that is your leader. How? They're 8-3 and three with a <laughs> negative point differential. But Baker Mayfield's the leader. Is Baker Mayfield top five in any of these categories? Is Baker Mayfield a franchise quarterback? Does Baker Mayfield even have his fifth-year option picked up? But now he's the leader of this franchise after one half. Make it make sense. No, no. Can you make this make sense? Because me and G was confused. G, he <laughs> said he rides around with his family in the second and he third row. He Baker I'm Mayfield driving. ain't the driver. That's like that. That's like a that's like a riddle. Marcellus Wiley yeah. is in the second and third row, but he's driving. Who Whoa. is the driver? That's a junior. <laughs> that's what? a junior. Marcellus? I'm the senior. Can, can you make did that Baker make Mayfield sense get them? Hey, Acho, did Baker Mayfield get them to eight and three? What up, bro? Did they ride? Did Baker Mayfield was he the driver of this First machine? Off, nine and three. three. First off, they're nine, nine and three. three. Did he Put get some there? respect on their name? Well, well, yes. When, he, when you throw no interceptions for five consecutive games, you're definitely a contributing factor. Marcellus, the center and the quarterback, they're the only two players that touch the ball each and every play, which means they are most responsible for turnovers. I only said the center to appease you, because if I would have said the real answer <laughs> to the quarterback, you would have said, actually, the center touches the ball. Oh, oh, the yeah. center and the quarterback, the only two people that touch the ball every play. So if Baker Mayfield has no turnovers in their last five games and they've won four of those games, Yes, Baker Mayfield is a large contributing factor. But what I don't get is why are you so hard to please when it comes to Baker? Marcellus, may I present what? you with the Wileyism, sir? Because yeah, it was you, the great philo philosopher Marcellus Vernon Wiley, who once said, Ooh. you can't lift the whole weight room. That's a good one. Who you can't that? lift the whole weight who room. You, you said that. Oh, Baker Mayfield finally realized this, Sal, that he can't lift the whole weight room. Baker's just trying to lift one dumbbell at a time. And oh, now dumb. that he's lifting it's one dumb. dumbbell at a time, it's dumb. you mad at him <laughs> for not trying to lift the whole weight room. You have to make that make sense, sir. Hmm. I agree 100%. It's not solely on Baker Mayfield. And, and I guess where I'm confused is yesterday we talked about, or two days ago, we talked about Cam Newton, and you were all for what Cam Newton has evolved into and what he's producing mm, get and him, how G. he's being get him, G. for his team. <laughs> yes. And get with him, G. those numbers, you're get sitting him. here telling me that get Cam him. is, is going to have a line get him, of G. teams waiting for him. I'm still waiting to see more than the Patriots in that line, but you don't like what Baker Mayfield is doing. And you're saying he's not contributing to his team and the wins. And now you're trying oh to my. punch holes oh my. in the way he That's plays because mean. his team is winning. He miss it. This is the he miss it. You, he's swinging this, it air. No, I didn't. This is Marcellus. This is what happens is what happens is when when you don't like 
a way uh, to, uh, the way the team is playing or a player specifically. Mm. And I don't know what you got mm. against Baker either. Maybe his 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 persona bothers you a little bit, Sal. Oh no, but, no. Uh, let mm. the man breathe. He's winning, and he's winning the right way. He's not being uh, od- bodacious. He's not being outlandish. Oh, oh, oh. He's just doing his he's, job. He's, he's not turning ding, ding, the ball ding, 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 ding. Somebody get Marcellus off the mat. Oh. Somebody get Marcellus off oh, the mat, please. Oh, wow. Y'all comparing Baker Mayfield to Cam Newton. I know y'all not literally doing that because we know that they have two different resumes. One's a former MVP and one's trying to get a fifth-year option. But, oh, I, I guess I, I got that one wrong. They're the same. This question is about leadership. Y'all know that Baker Mayfield runs two volatile, too extreme. He can't even control his own emotions. He'll say, I'm not going to say a word. But again, I got to say something. And he'll go out there and say, hey, I am the leader. We're on a four-game winning streak. But I'm going to look like eggs against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now he's on another four-game winning streak. Hey, I'm the leader. I didn't say that Baker Mayfield's not contributing to the whole. I'm saying he's not the leader of the whole. That's all I'm saying right here. Now, since y'all want to take it at me, I always get out the war- out the way. I am egoless in these conversations. Here are two quotes from beat writers out there in Cleveland. Tell me if I'm the only one thinking this. Uh, One quote, he's been perfectly average in a limited role for most of the season. Oh, that sounds like the leader of our team. Oh, no, no, a 9-3 team, that's the leader. Oh, what about this quote? Mayfield has been maddeningly inconsistent this season. Oh, but it's on Marcellus Wiley. All I'm telling you is don't have such low standards for leadership if you're really trying to do it all and reach your goals.